I am James Swanick. Welcome to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I love it when past clients show up and tell me that they're two years alcohol free or three years alcohol free or one year alcohol free. It's incredible. And today we're going to be talking to one of those clients, Janice Swales. And uh, this is a unique episode, actually, because I recorded the following episode live on one of our Project 90 client calls. Project 90 is the program that I run that helps folks like you quit drinking for at least 90 days and get long-term power over alcohol, whether that means quitting forever or whether it means quitting for at least 90 days and doing moderation. The idea or the goal at the end of it is that you have ultimate power over alcohol for the rest of your life. So you get to listen in now on a pre-90 call. This is one of the, yeah, this is like we do, well, there are six available group calls per week inside of that program. And you're about to listen to one of those six uh, calls. You're going to hear existing Project 90 clients ask our past Project 90 client about her experience being alcohol-free. Uh, you'll get a feel for the, I don't know, I guess like the culture that we have in there, which is very fun and aspirational. This is not an AA meeting where everyone's talking about how much their life sucks and they're navel gazing and looking down. We try to be very uplifting and positive and friendly. Uh, so I hope that uh, comes across in the audio you're about to listen to. Uh, if you would like to get my daily email, I do run, I do write a daily email. It's 365 emails a year. Uh, there's a description in the description of this podcast, you'll see a link um, to my guide, alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. If you click on that, uh, you will then get access to my uh, daily email. You'll also get my guide, which is the process that I give to my Project 90 clients on how to get long-term power over alcohol. So if you want that free guide, the link is in the show notes. And uh, what else do we talk about? I'm not sure. I'm just going to play it, I think. I think that's it. Yeah, details are in the description. Here we go. Have a listen to a Project 90 group call where we celebrate Janice Whale two years alcohol-free. Here we go. All right, we are doing a P90, a Project 90 group call. So if you're listening on the podcast, welcome, everyone. We've got Project 90 clients here. Everyone want to say hello? Say hello. Shout out. To hello. 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 Hi. All right. And today we are celebrating and interviewing one of our Project 90 alumni members who joined Project 90 two years and one day ago. Uh, and now she's two years alcohol free. And her name is Janice. Jana, am I allowed to say your last name, Jana? I am actually, aren't I? I yeah. am. Yeah. Janice Wales from the Yukon in Canada, which is amazing. <laughs> and Jana has actually been uh, interviewed on the podcast uh, previously, I'm just going to show, I'm going to share my screen here with our Project 90 clients. You can see here, episode 23 of the Alcohol Free Lifestyle uh, was called Janice Wales, Quitting Alcohol May Have Saved My Life. And it was released on, when was it? It was about a year ago. Let's have a go. Let me just go back here. What was the actual date? Uh, August 11th, 2020. And now here we are again of 2021, and Jana is two years alcohol-free. So first of all, round of applause for Jana for being two years alcohol-free, everyone. <laughs> Great job. If you're listening on the podcast, that's the sound of nine people uh, <laughs> clapping their hands for Jana. Hey, Jana, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, what you do, how you came to join Project 92 years ago, and what life looks like two years. I'll just give you the floor to just kind of share whatever you want to share, and then we can do some Q&A from there. Well, that sounds good. I have to say, I'm really pleased to have done the pandemic alcohol-free. I think mm. that that, um, that was just a wonderful um, kind of uh, side benefit from this whole thing is not to have had that ordeal on my plate as well. So that was just, yeah, that was just a positive upside of the whole thing but um yeah I live in the Yukon next to Alaska for um uh so it's uh it's not snowy all the time it's um right now it's really hot actually and uh I was saying one of the things that I was proud about is about 10 minutes before this call started I was screaming into my driveway with my uh, with truck with a camper on the back just getting back from the lake I'm all sunburned um at weekend 
with my son. It was really fun. Um, but uh, in my work life, I run a museum and uh, I think about all the big questions of history. Who are we? What does it all mean? All of those kind of things. How do we make sense of place and sense of self? Um, and uh, how I came across P90 two years ago, I was just, I, I am endlessly grateful for this group because um, uh, I was saying just before that uh, that I really like the idea that I'm an awesome person and I want to be even more awesome. And I like that thread that runs through this. I think that that's a wonderful, fulfilling way of thinking about your future trajectory. And um, that was true for me at the time, but it was becoming less true. My trajectory was changing and it was changing for the worse because of alcohol. And I wasn't quite sure what to do. I had a few stressful life things going on and I wasn't dealing with things very well. And, um, and through happenstance, I came across two things at the same time. One was this P90, which I joined. And the other was cold water swimming. Um, and both of those continue. So both of those are kind of a two year, two year old thing that I've been doing now. And what, uh, what were your drinking habits a couple of years ago, Jana? Like what were you drinking? How often, how much? Um, I would say I was drinking something most days and generally I'd have some kind of a hangover once a week, which means I'd be kind of drunk at least once a week hangover worthy drunk drinkiness I guess yeah yeah and how was that compromising different areas of your life uh well as I was saying to um to the fellow I was just talking to uh when we're in the rooms um I did a whole bunch of stuff in the last week and a half uh an unbelievable amount of very awesome stuff and uh some part of that would have had to not happen to fit drinking in for sure um because it did take up space and now that space is taken up with doing really cool fulfilling things um i was saying uh at the museum we now offer um open air cockpit rides on a vintage biplane which has just come together in the last week and a half and i think the amount of insurance and rigmarole to get something like that off the ground um that that would have taken longer if i had to do some drinking along the way what what have you in hindsight two years down the line look back you look back on when you were drinking why do you think you were drinking the way you were drinking back then that is a good question why do i think i was drinking i have learned how to prioritize better um what i would do i think is i would have really a difficult time um ranking one thing over another or kicking something off the list and if i could come up with it's kind of a passive aggressive way of being right if i could come up with some way of not being able to do something instead of directly saying i couldn't do it then uh then that was, I guess, what alcohol gave me is it gave me a little break because I couldn't make a break for myself, which is so sad. <laughs> I'm really glad I'm not doing that anymore. Um, you know, oh, I want to sleep on a, on, on a Sunday. Um, like now I just do sometimes if I feel like it. But before I had to have a horrible headache or something or else I would not. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was there a particular incident or were there incidents that made you come to the realization, oh, I'm, I've either A, got a drinking problem or B, I want to get this drinking situation under control? Um, yeah, well, I think my social circle became kind of more, more centered around drinking than it was around socialness. Um, Certainly, some of my friendships have changed in the last two years. Um, oh, Dave, Dave says I'm loving myself more. Yeah, or just, yeah, yeah totally. Um, so, uh, 
sorry, what was the question again? Uh, I guess I was asking were there were, were there incidents oh. or was there an incident or incidents that kind of got you to the point where you wanted to take action around your drinking? Yeah, totally. Okay, so it was like um, it was a social thing. Um, it was a work thing too. I think uh, I think it's initially very awkward to not drink at work things when people are drinking. You know, you feel like you're gonna um, ruin the the work deals or the ideas or some kind of thing. Um, so I found that before this group impossible to think about. Like, how would I? How would I? avoid that with drinking. Uh, there's other places in the country where drinking is a big part of work and social lives. And the Yukon is one of them. I think we're like the number one drinkers in Canada. <laughs> um, and so, um, and then also I had some other things, like I had some uh, relationship problems going on and uh and my son's dad had had very recently um, had a horrible accident at the skate park, and he'd broken his neck and his face. Um, and also within a week of that, I rolled my car and my dog died. So I had these some horrible things going on. And that's what I mean. Like the trajectory was obviously changing the wrong way. And all of a sudden, kind of suddenly. Um, and it turns out quitting drinking and swimming in really cold lakes uh, is good for you. Yeah. Was that the point where you saw maybe a Facebook ad for, for me in Project 90 and that's where you reached out and where you chose to get accountability and support and coaching around your drinking for the 90 days? Was it around that, around that time? Was that like the catalyst? Were they the catalysts? Yeah. Well, you have a magnificent memory. It was... It's funny because um, I I had always wondered, I think, and I've said this to you before, that, you know, do phones listen to you and target ads or whatever kind of thing? And I'll be endlessly grateful to my phone or to Facebook or whatever it was because um, I had been just talking to my friend. And then suddenly my phone showed me a picture of you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. So yeah, maybe I was listening. It's all this technology or something. It's like you were talking about, maybe I should quit alcohol. It's like James is in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was just great. Yeah. And then what what happened? I mean, it was two years ago now. What what happened during those 90 days that really cemented you making this choice to now be two years alcohol free? Because it's two years alcohol free today, or at least yes, sorry, yesterday. What happened during those 90 days that turned it around for you? Because some people can do the 90 days and then go, all right, I'm going to go back to drinking or I'll do some moderation. Like what happened during those 90 days that made it be, okay, I'm just going to continue on this alcohol-free path? Um, I think I'm a, a fairly motivated, driven person. And I did buy into the proposition of why don't you see if you can be more driven and achieve more without alcohol. You know, it's just that what if proposition. Hey, what if you just take this out of the equation, see what happens? And uh, and I just like how that equation's going. So I am sticking with it. I don't, I think because I'm thinking about it that way, I never even want to drink. Like it's not one of the, it's not one of the choices of fun things to do um, any anymore. And it used to be, like the choice of things to do oftentimes, but, um, but now, but yeah, I tend not to think about it at all. And if anything, I like now I, I think about it and I, I have a bit of a negative feel about it. Like I just, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know why I would want to do that. Um, like your attractively packaged poison that you talk about. I'm like, yeah, actually that is kind of a weird thing to do. Um, I can do other fun things with friends. And I was saying um, earlier that uh, that I still sometimes do find that conversation hard. Um, I think if somebody surprises me, they're like, hey, I brought some wine for us. Isn't that great? And then there's an awkward moment, right? It's like, oh, because I, I don't want to upset people. Um, 
but I, I'm getting better at that too. And uh, it just happened this weekend, actually. So I could be on this call and have failed like the day before the two years. <laughs> been too bad. But that's what my friend said. She brought a bottle of wine on this camping trip. She's like, Dana, isn't this great? This is going to be so nice. I was like, oh, yeah, it's totally going to be nice. You have that. I have this other stuff. Um, you know, I stopped drinking a couple years ago. and uh, But still, I find it a bit awkward. I just wish people would not do that, but whatever. They do. Mm. <laughs> so if you were to, uh, we, just before we, we hit record here on this podcast episode, and this is for the podcast listener, we've got about 12 Project 90 clients on the call now on a Zoom call. This is how we're recording this. We did a little exercise where uh, I invited our clients to write down all the reasons why they were awesome this past week, you know, like to be their own public relations company. Uh, and then people spent a few minutes writing those things down. And then we went into little breakout rooms and, and we shared with, with each other why we we're awesome. So let me ask the question to you, Jenna. Why? have these last two years been awesome for you? Like, why are you awesome being alcohol free? Uh, I, the main thing is to do with um, truly enjoying myself more. That's just a general, um, a general observation. And I've always uh, enjoyed myself. I'm an interesting, fun person. And, uh, and I like that about myself, but certainly I mean, one of the concerns with quitting drinking is I thought maybe my creativity would go away. I think I grew up thinking, you know, Kerouac and the beatniks, you got to uh, you got to do all the drink and drugs or whatever and have a typewriter and write novels. Or <laughs> but um, but it didn't. It's it's gotten better and more thoughtful. So I enjoy that and I continue to enjoy it more um I guess uh I used to always feel torn between work and my family and now I feel I feel like I can do, do both well which is a really balancing feel um Brene Brown has a note um she says mind the gap so here's where your dreams or goals are or where you think you should be and here's where you are now and just keep an eye on that gap and don't let it get too wide. And I think I had let it get wide, which um, which for a time I tried to solve with drinking and that didn't work very well. Um, but now it seems like it seems like the gap is shrinking. And also my goals and my um, expectations of myself are growing and being more becoming more interesting. And uh, and so that's kind of cool. The bar is the bar is moved. I'm doing. I have much more expectations on myself than I did before, and I'm meeting them quite well. I feel, and that just feels like magic. Beautiful. I love that. Uh, let me open up to our Project Ninety clients to now ask you some questions, Jenna. Thank you so much for answering mine. And just can I just invite Project Ninety clients when you introduce yourself. Um, just say your, your first name and then what, how many days alcohol-free you are. So, for example, it might be, you know, John Day 52, for example, and then ask your question to Jana. Likewise, if you want to acknowledge Jana for something, feel free to do so. Who'd like to go first with a question or acknowledgement? Kathy, you look like you've got something to say. <laughs> Hi, Jenna. I'm Kathy. Um, Miami, 26 days alcohol-free. Now, I had a question for Jen. She had mentioned about social. Do you feel that you needed to change your friends or that was on your own that you um, felt that you made a change of acquaintances? Um, no, I, I didn't. I've changed how I socialize, I think. I, don't cha I haven't changed my friends at all. I do Okay. quite enjoy going to the bar with friends you know when the pandemic allows I guess um and uh what I do these days is and I know there's other costs to drinking than just the cost of booze but I figure I'm ahead of the game so I tend to buy my friends drinks and they really like that um so the friends that are friends because they're my friends nothing's changed with that um 
there was some kind of drinking friends that have that have dropped off I don't see them and it's because that's what we did right um so I found it was it was really cool being able to go to the bar and be able to not have that feeling like like you're some kind of a weird weirdo um because you're not and I really uh I really like how a number of my friends when they have house parties because I haven't really publicly announced this no drinking thing I tell people sometimes but um they my my friends they know and they have started making these zero proof drinks and they've um you know they care for me they make these lovely things for me so yeah some of my friends have changed but it's because you know they they weren't the the friends that are the the, the forever friends they're they're still forever friends and during the pandemic I don't know I had no friends so that was no problem but um (laughs) or I guess it's still the pandemic I don't know it's all very confusing in Canada with the pandemic um and I'm sure it is all over the world uh but um yeah okay I don't know. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yes, some yeah. Of it was, it was probably more acquaintances that dropped off and your true friends acknowledge and respect you and you didn't really have to make any changes of your true friends. Yeah. And, uh, and do you know, I think, I think probably, you know, work acquaintances who knew me, I'm pretty sure they knew I was drinking a bit too much. And I think they just quietly, think that oh it's kind of nice that that I'm not so loud anymore so So, yeah yeah um I wouldn't say that I feel any negative outcome friend wise I feel very supported good good great question Kathy uh who else let's let's have some more questions well I'm I feel lucky because I actually got to talk to you earlier um, this is Evan, and I'm curious about your um, your son and maybe how, I don't know, two years ago, how old he was then, and if there's been kind of any difference in your relationship with your son since you quit drinking. I've got two young kids at home, too, and right, and I'd love to get to that place where they don't even remember that their dad ever drank, so. Yeah, that's really cool. I think, um, oh, so in answer to your question, he's eight now, so he was six then and uh so I think timing wise it's quite good I don't think he remembers a drinky mom and so that's great or a drinky sad mom right ah so sad (laughs) um and so uh as far as you know is it altruistic there's a term altruistic selfishness um where you know, doing benefits for yourself helps others or altruistic self-interest, I think is the thing. And, um, that's how I, that I feel when I picture my son's repercussions from this project, that's it. Like he is massively gaining from, um, a mom who gets early on, you know, up early on weekend days, or, I mean, now I'm always the mom that goes swimming with the kids or that, makes the pancakes in the morning or whatever kind of thing. Um, and how lovely to be so wholesome and fun. And I certainly benefit from that. And he does too. Do you know what he called me the other day? He called me bro mom. I think that's, uh, that's pretty good <laughs> accolades coming from an eight-year-old bro mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's super cool. Very inspirational. Thank you. Mm. Evan, how many days alcohol-free are you, by the way? Uh, five days in the program, 15 days alcohol-free. Amazing. Congratulations. Round of applause for Evan just for a little you. time out there. Good job, mate. Well done. Thank you. More questions or acknowledgements? Who wants to roll in with the question? Uh, I just to... Well, Cody, Cody, we'll go Cody first. Sorry, Cody. What day, how many days alcohol-free are you, Cody? Day 50 with Project 90, day 54, no alcohol. Uh, and rocking and rolling, yeah. Round of applause for Cody. Great job. I'm over Great the hill job. now. I'm over. I, I went through my midlife crisis already. 
<laughs> just kidding because that's not halfway because halfway is that that's I, I ain't going back so uh J jenna your story is very inspiring to me i have a 10 and six year old as well and just like evan said i want to be that i want to i want all most of their memories um to be a, 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 a sober and very present and very qualitative father you know and so i could just tell that you probably are just a kick-ass mom and i just want to acknowledge the fact that um this is the you're the longest standing person that I've had come back on uh, and heard heard this from. So it just feels really good to see it uh, two years down the road and that glow and that zest and that spunk and that excitement for life. And like I think at the very end of like your initial dialogue, you had said you talked about the Bre uh, Brené Brown quote and uh, like minding the gap. Uh, with our bigger goals in life, but then you also kind of like brought it back to a personal level about having healthy expectations and really hitting that mark on a day-to-day -day basis. And that really resonated with me, like, because sometimes we get so lofty in thinking about um, that, that gap can feel so big in this moment, right? Where we have very, uh, such a great scale of varying dreams and, and aspirations from character qualities to, you know, whatever it is, to, to financial um, stability, things of things of all sorts. But with the day-to-day -day stuff, the small victories, I think those are sometimes the most challenging to appreciate and challenging to capture. And when I was drinking, I never noticed them. Like they kind of would go all under the rug, like the little tiny moments of magic of the day of just showing up early or um, getting up before my alarm or picking out my outfit for work the night before or just having things, doing the dishes uh, well before I was, you know, prompted by my better half. Like any anything of that accord just feels, you know, the small, small things I, I think are sometimes the biggest things. And, you know, I really sensed that in your story. So I just wanted to point that out and say that that really touched me. So thanks. Oh, thank you. Hey, you bet. Great observation, Cody. Yeah, the small things we can we can so easily overlook, which is why we, which is why I encourage all of our clients to be writing down the twenty things that we're grateful for each day, and for twenty reasons why we're awesome, so we can shine a light on those things and not sweep them under the rug. To borrow your phrase, Cody. So great observation there. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, who else? Who else has got a question? Anna, you had a question, I think. How many days alcohol free are you, Anna? Um, 29. 29. Round of applause for Anna, day 29. <laughs> Great job. All right. Uh, Thanks. To, our, to our podcast listener, if you can't hear the round of applause, it's because most of our clients are on mute uh, at the moment. But uh, maybe next time when we do a round of applause, everyone can unmute themselves so we can bask in the uh in the glow of 12 people clapping their hands anna you had a question um yeah i have a few but i'll try to narrow it down or at least i'll start with a two-part question um jana thank i'll just echo what everybody else has been saying thank you so much for uh taking the time to be here with us today i think for me and probably other people it's like a glimpse into our future and it's just really great to see you thriving you know two years beyond um, so a couple of questions. Um, one, what are the some of the habits that you learn in the P90 program that you've stuck with? And then the second part of the question, which might be kind of the same, is what routines do you use to the replace the previous bad habits that you had? Um, I think those positive affirmations um, are what I'd learned and I I did get better with doing visualizations. Like I said, I am a creative person. It's something I really prize about myself. And um, and I was able to use it as a tool to visualize what it's going to be like. What are my hopes and dreams? Um, and so uh, I found that very helpful. It was Kevin who was the coach when, when I was doing the P90. And uh, Kevin always just, he was just so calm and gentle and like um was it Cody was observing interested in the little things and the little successes and um the idea of what was he always saying like lean into 
thing. Lean into that feel. Lean into that feeling, Jana. Or, um, <laughs> um, and uh, and I found that is something that I guess I've practiced ever since then, and I continue to. Is um, when I have partly, I think I was drinking too much because I have probably some kind of lifelong anxiety that I never managed very well. But um, the whole, you know, when you get that feeling that when I get that anxious feeling, I get Kevin's voice saying, lean into that, you know, examine that feeling. What, what is it all about? Where is it coming from? Um, and since then, um, I, I guess I feel like I'm getting better and better at doing that. Um, and that is invaluable. And I do that through kind of visualizing I visualize sort of surfing or something. Um, so whatever, I'm a surfer in a different way than other people on this call. But uh, um, yeah, I just imagine like, I don't know, catching a, catching a wave and staying ahead of it and, uh, and really enjoying the feeling, I guess. Uh, and I, yeah, I, th I think, um, I think that perhaps is the biggest learning for me that's helped me with this because perhaps this all crops up from some kind of lifelong anxiety that I can deal with better now. But there was a second part to your question. What was it? Just unmute myself. Um, what kind of routines have you developed um, to keep you from returning to old bad habits? Have those been pretty solidified by now? See, I just added in another question. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, um, what James uh, talked about is, um, you know, being cognizant of your eating and your health and your exercise. Um, you know, if you're working on yourself with the idea, so you're awesome, can you be more awesome? So first you think about the alcohol part of that recipe, right? And then exercise and diet and all those kind of things. Um, and so I guess building that recipe about how can, what is the recipe that works for me to make sure that I have what I need to reach these goals that I set for myself? And sometimes also to question this goal thing, right? Do I need to always set relentlessly bigger goals? Do I really need to do that? And sometimes, yes, I do. But sometimes, no. And it's like, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just put uh, your son in that spot, right? And, um, and let that goal go, because it is actually not all that important. So I think the, the prioritizing is um is extremely helpful for me thank you jenna and thanks for the questions anna uh who else question hey, or acknowledgement I, I have a question um yeah just introduce yourself by first name and and uh how many days alcohol free you are we get to great, call great. you indo right it's indo yeah indo for sure yeah so um i'm indo uh day five um, Round of applause. Unmute yourself, everyone. <laughs> let's let's get everyone. Day five. Unmute. Clap. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you. Touched on like how you haven't really made it a public announcement, and that's like you know for me, I'm fairly new to the program, and you know I thought about it a couple of times, uh, just being around like my loved ones, like my brother, my sister-in-law, and you know um, I haven't mentioned it because for me it's something very personal and like. I don't know, I, I just am kind of doing it for myself really at, at, at the moment. And so I just want to know, like, uh, during your, you know, time uh, going through P90, like, how did you deal with, like, telling others or keeping it to yourself? And, like, why did you choose one over the other? Um, yeah, I think I would certainly tell people if I had to, like, if they were handing a drink to me <laughs> or else I'd say no, thank you. Um, I did, uh, I did talk to my work colleagues and um, uh, requested their support really strongly um, because part of the reason I was doing the project is so I could keep my job. Like I 
like I said, my trajectory was turning the wrong way and I really needed like just all of a sudden it, it, it was, it was quite surprising. And I think sometimes things like that happen quite quickly. Um, and so I, I had to just really kind of yoink the wheel back onto a, a positive direction. And I did need all of their help because what I needed to do was not have work stress for a little while while I just focused on this thing that was very new. I found that when I did things, kind of everything that I did for a little while, I felt a bit like a debutante, sort of, um, what is it called? Debutante, sort of uh, present yourself to society, right? I think it's a Southern yeah. thing, <laughs> thing when you're whatever age and you present yourself to society. I felt like I was doing that and I sort of did it secretly, but I felt a bit like this is the new Jana. You may not know that I'm new. I know that I'm new. And I'm just going to see what this is like, because this is really cool. And uh, through that period, I was just kind of setting new habits and um, and sometimes talking to people if I felt like it. Um, but you're right. I also felt like it was a private thing. And I did also have, and maybe I still do, there's some kind of shame attached to it. Um, which I try and think about why that is because, um, you know, how can you feel like you're totally awesome and have part of your, part of how you view yourself, have a bit of shame involved. Right. And, uh, and so that's, I think why I'm thinking right now, you know, what is the way I can say this? Because people that I have talked to, a number of them have actually quit drinking and, um, and I have sent, uh, like I've really taken a positive leadership role with friends and at work and all kinds of, in all kinds of situations. And I just, I just, I guess I want to share it correctly, um, which I am pleased that James is turning this into a podcast because I may well just say like, we do <laughs> look at this. <laughs> People would be like, what the heck? Um, as far as shame stuff, I, I think it's to do with that I felt a bit out of control and I don't like feeling out of control and I don't like that I could get out of control. So I don't really like to, I don't really like to say that there was any kind of problem or something to, uh, something to improve. I don't know. That's so, but also there's something quite brave, I guess, in recognizing there's a problem and in changing it and, and in improving. So, and again, with that uh, altruistic self-interest, you know, I'm benefiting myself certainly with this whole project and everybody else seems to get a piece of that too, which is, which is really cool. It's really cool. But, um, but it definitely is a sensitive, a sensitive part. And I'm really glad you asked that because yeah, I often wonder about it. And sometimes I, say kind of weird things you know if somebody catches me off guard I'll say something dumb like I never drink or I don't know um it doesn't happen too often but then I then I feel weird and I'm like oh, gosh what do I do now to I guess it just takes time to figure out this stuff and uh and I think James just had like his was it 10 years James which is pretty cool and uh and I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, year three and four and five and stumbling and bumbling my way through stuff. Um, it's, it's really, it's really great. Cause yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Indo. And thank you, Jenna. Who else? Hey, Jenna, Ian here, uh, day 90. Day 90 for Ian. Unmute yourself, yeah. everyone, and do a big Woo! shout out. Like, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Danny, congratulations on year two, and thanks very much for sharing your journey so far with us. Um, I have a two-parter question as well. I wanted to ask you about uh, day 91. Did you did you know on day 91 that you were going to do day 180, day 270, day 365, year two, year three, year four, year five? And um, how did it feel having, having graduated? And going out there into the big bad world to do all these, uh, reach all these extra milestones, um, having moved on from D90. Uh, yeah, I think on day 91, well, what Kevin had said is um, 
it's kind of hard to sign up for doing something forever, but you can have attainable bits of time. And um, he suggested, you know, as the 90 days pr- progressed, that you just think of it as, oh, this is something that I'm doing right now for a certain period of time. And uh, that works well for me. I think um, I think I can start to think of drinking as just something that I don't do rather than putting a time to it. And uh, and sometimes I might say, you know, oh, well, maybe it's something I'll do again. But I think it's just not. It's just not something I want to do again. It, um, it's like um, a date gone badly. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, I think I could just leave it at that, you know, it's okay. Well, um, I learned what that's like and, uh, and I'm just not going to do that again. So I think that answers both parts of your question. Does it not? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, John. Just a little side question, Ian, as you're on day 90 now, what are you, what are your thoughts about what you're going to do from here? I just, it, it's just incredible um, the transformation in myself from, from uh, day one to day 90. And uh, the way I'm feeling now, like this could be day one. It, 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 like I'm, I'm, I have a plan for the next 90 days. Um, I have a plan for the 90 days after that and for after that. Um, None of those periods involves alcohol at all. It just, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I just want it to be part of history now. Mm. And, and and very, very much like Janet, I have no desire, um, I have no desire to, to drink um, anything. Uh, I was even thinking yesterday, you know, I could get another 90 days out of it by having a, by doing a, a, a reset, but just want to drink a glass of wine. Yeah. Oh. So great. <laughs> It's great to it's 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 great to it's great to feel like that at the end of this at the end of this um, initial part of, of the journey. Thank you. Ian. Yeah, I agree. It seems like um, it seems like I'm not some. It's not something that I ever actively avoided since I started this P90 group um, because it was a positive shift in thinking, and so that seems to me that for me that worked and. Uh, and so far it's stuck and it seems like it will for some time to come. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Ian. Someone else got a question? Yeah, I've got a question. Yeah, Dave. How many days alcohol free are you, Dave? Oh God, I need a calculator. Hang on. Um, <laughs> now, for me, two years in on February the 18th, whatever that was. So, yeah, so, um, and Round I say alcohol. For Dave first. Round of applause and some woohoo for Dave, by the way. Great job. Yes. Woo. Woo. Um, I say alcohol free because for me, and this is part of my question, Jana, whether you felt this and how you would express this yourself, but for me, I never uh, I never really chose to drink alcohol. Someone or something or some society here in Australia or advertising or whatever it was, seemed to make that decision for me. So I was never, I never, until I met, I met James and he invited me to his alcohol-free weekend in Venice Beach um, two years ago, last February or March, perhaps it was. And up and, and, and I, I kid you not, this is what happened. I met him and he said, I said, hey, can I have a coffee with you? He said, no, no, I'm too busy for a coffee. Why don't you come to my event? I'll send you a link. So he sent me a link. I clicked on the link, and I kid you not, I looked at the screen. The screen said alcohol-free living. And I was looking at this thinking, holy crap, I've never even thought of that for myself. Like it was never anything that I even thought was a thing. And all of a sudden it became a possibility that I could choose not to drink as opposed to drinking. So, Jenna, have you felt that you've now got a choice, and this is a continual choice, that you're making not to drink, whereas before it was a situation that you never really chose. You just did it because it was some a, ha- a habit that was so strongly ingrained. How would you, how would you express that to someone else about the freedom that's come 
from now being empowered where you can choose or you can you can choose to or you can choose not to? Um, I think that idea of choice is very real because, I, yeah, I feel like I didn't really have a choice um, before and I don't really know what the reason was. I think it was um, partly that I'd set habits, partly it was um, a bit of armor, you know, we all put up our armor in different ways um, and certainly going to something and having a glass of wine between you and the other people. There's something about that that is that at the time I felt helpful and I didn't know how to, how to not like how to not have that piece of armor, but it turns out life is more fun without that kind of armor. Um, so I think that word choice is exactly right. Knowing that, uh, well, knowing that you can do it without those, uh, those kind of unhelpful helpers, right? Like mm -hmm. shitty helpers. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think you're right. And um, did you go to that alcohol-free thing or was that the one that was canceled? No, no, I went. Oh, you're yeah, lucky. You're lucky guy. Cause uh, uh, there was the one, maybe it was just the last year one that got canceled. And I was so excited. I was going to go, I was even going to go with a friend. Um, and uh and it was pretty, it, it, yeah, it, I was very much looking forward to it. And so I hope there's another one coming up. I uh, mm. I know that there's all kinds of considerations, but I was so looking forward to that because I was like, man, it'll be so cool to meet yeah. all these people that I've met in person on these calls and then all these other people that are just circling around within this idea. So mm -hmm. sometime soon, but I get to meet y'all here. That's very cool as well. Thank you very much as well for having me here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Dave attended the 2019 one and then uh, I have this weekend, alcohol-free weekend, wellness weekend where we in Venice Beach, California, and we, uh, it's like a conference for a couple of days, but then we also go out on the beach and do some beach dancing and we go for a hike up in the Santa Monica Mountains area and everyone gets to connect and uh, it's a completely alcohol-free weekend. And, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. But sadly, I had to cancel it because of the pandemic in, uh, in 2020. Uh, and, yes, we will be doing another one as soon as things awesome. start to open up a little bit. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for your questions to our Project 90 clients. And uh, thank you so much to Jana for sharing your experience and your guide and having your guidance and your expertise on being two years alcohol free. And congratulations, Jana. It's amazing. I mean, it's personally uh, amazing for me to see someone become a client and then two years down the line, just see how they are and their way of being, being so much, just so much energy and happiness and clarity and focus. It's just a real gift for me to see that. And uh, I so appreciate you, Jenna, for sharing with our clients and with our podcast listeners. So thank you. Thank you very much. This is just it's been the best thing ever. Good couple of years. I'm looking forward to the next whole bunch of years like this. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I want to just go around quickly. If anyone needs to leave um, because we've gone over time, feel free to. That's no, no problem. But um, I just want to ask, that: would anyone like to share what they discovered or learned on this call? What was like, what felt valuable about this particular call if you wanted to share what felt valuable just unmute yourself and and share and we'll go around the group and maybe do three people clients are pondering they're pondering i can see their brains I think, processing I, ian go for it Donna, I, I just think it's so reassuring to see somebody like yourself who's so comfortable in their own skin um not drinking uh because i'm i'm sure i speak for everybody but when we start this quest, there's there's an uneasiness that takes time to to shake off, you know. And there's a <clears throat> anticipated uncomfort about, oh, okay, I have to go out in you know next week and how do I get over that? And for for me, there was a couple of hurdles. Um, how will I go out and meet my friends in the park? How will I go out with my workmates? And um, when we're sitting mm -hmm. down having a having a meal at the end of the day, and uh, 
family reunions and, and things like that. But as, as time goes on, certainly over these 90 days, uh, those hurdles just got smaller and smaller. And I got more comfortable and comfortable um, in those situations. But just watching you and, and hearing you uh, over the last hour, hour or so, it's, it's quite clear that you're, that you're very comfortable in your skin and, and you're very comfortable mm. uh, not drinking, um, regardless of who you're with or, or what you're doing. And I just think that that's very, very reassuring. Well, mm. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ian. Someone else want to share what felt valuable about this call today? Yeah, sure. I'll just jump in. Uh, Cody, Cody out of Oakland. Um, I really, some of the, some of your like phrases that you said um, in your stories were really stuck with me. Uh, I wrote them down like altruistic self-interest. I love that because we talked about uh, on previous podcast episodes with James, like healthy selfish, right? Being healthy selfish because it's like, no, I'm doing this for myself. I'm standing up and reclaiming, kind of re-empowering myself and making a choice for me. That's what I'm doing. And so mm-hmm. I love this sense of altruistic self-interest. And I love that 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 how you how you coined that. Um, I also love how you coined uh like phrases are my favorite thing. So like language is one of my favorite things. So attainable bits of time. You're like, uh, I'm not worried about it if it's just gonna be forever. It's just an attainable bit of time. It's very casual and very achievable, right? It's very Kaizen. It's like, I'm doing this right now and that's that. And it doesn't have to be this whole, uh, what am I gonna do when I go to a wedding five years from now? Or what do I gotta do one day when I'm retired and I wanna own a vineyard, you know? What am I gonna do when I, all of these kind of ideas that come up in our head that alcohol is always there and, and showing its face. And I just like how you're like, no, this attainable amount of time, this bite-sized tangible thing, that I can express myself right here today and meet that expectation. So again, Jenna Banana, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, <laughs> it really was an honor to listen to you. Thank you so much for rocking and shining your light. And I'm going to do the same. That's all. I just wanted to say that. So, uh, Really no question or anything, just a sense of acknowledgement again. Amazing, Cody. Thank you, mate. One more. One person want to share what they discovered or what felt valuable for them or an acknowledgement? One more. I think um, what Ian and I were talking about earlier about um, him showing up as a really good dad this last week um, and his being five and six and Jana's being, um, you know, six. And I think having older kids, I think that your young kids will, will only see you and remember you in this wonderful, positive light and mm-hmm. strong. And I, Wish I could have had that, but you know what? It's never too late and I can start today and I can go forward. And I've already seen positive change in 64 days with my 20 somethings. And it's um, a big thing. I think uh, our families and our kids and our husbands and our spouses and our everybody, the influence we're having on them. So I really liked you sharing that. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. And I love that what you said there, you can start today. It's never too late. And this is just for our listener on the on the podcast. Uh, if you would like to start today, you'd like to have a conversation about joining us in Project 90, I'll give you a couple of ways you can do that. You can go, you can book an exploratory phone call with one of our amazing coaches. And the website for that is alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule there we go someone's got a cool little ringtone in the back background there for dramatic effect um that website is alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule uh you can book a time to speak to one of our coaches we'll ask you a few questions and then we'll call you uh or if you're in the u.s and you're on a mobile phone you can text me at the number 44222 just uh text me the word project 90 and i will text you back the link where you can schedule that exploratory call. Uh, Jana, thank you so much again for your time. We'll let you go now and uh, we'll just, uh, we'll do a sign off here with, uh, without you, just with our, with our clients. But Jana, thank you so much again. Really appreciate you and uh, onwards and upwards. We'll have you back here on three years alcohol free, four years and five years, maybe. <laughs> totally. Totally. Let's do it. That sounds great. I totally can't wait to meet all of you guys at the, Beach Disco in Venice Beach, whenever it is. I'm looking forward to it. Cool.
Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. You can you can uh, you can depart. I'm now. going. I'm going. All right. See you, Jenna. Oh, Take care. I'm Bye. Going. There we go. All right. Wonderful. Well, that was great, guys. Um, that feel good. I see lots of smiling faces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh uh, yeah. I love it. So what I'm going to invite you guys to do now is um, when we hang up here in a second, just go on to Marco Polo and just share what felt valuable because obviously we've got clients who weren't on this particular call or couldn't make it for whatever reason. Remember, the fastest way to learn anything is to teach it. So I invite you to go and teach it right now by just hanging up on the Zoom call, going on to Marco Polo, recording a little selfie video and sharing it with our other members who weren't able to be here. That will both help them and it will help reinforce what you just learned in your own brain. Sound good? All right, guys. It was so great to see you. And uh, we'll see you on one of the next calls. And yeah, yeah. I'll see you on. All right. See you guys. Bye. Congrats, Ian. Congrats, Ian. Yes. Good Congrats, Ian. Ian. Actually, Ian, stay here on the call. I'm just going to press stop on the podcast and I'll talk to you now privately. Uh, to you. congratulate you on your 90 days. See you, Anna. And to the podcast listener, thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I want to load you up with some free stuff. If you look in the show description, there's a link there to get my guide, which is the Alcohol Freedom Formula Guide. And in that guide, I will walk you through the process and system for successfully reducing or quitting alcohol. It's the same system and process that I give to my clients inside of Project 90. And if you would like to get your hands on that guide, you can click the link in the description part of this episode, or you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. Likewise, if you would like to be considered for Project 90 to join our community and get some accountability, some coaching and have fun, achieve some goals over at least 90 days with our help and support, then you're invited to schedule a complimentary coaching call with one of my coaches. You can do that by clicking the link in the show description or going to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule. Now, Project 90 is for over 30s only, and it's really for people who are ready to get long-term power over alcohol. You don't have to quit forever, but you will have to quit for at least 90 days with our support. Just a reminder, 95% of my content is free and plastered all over the internet. If you just Google James Swanick and the word alcohol, you'll find that. For those of you who want additional support, if you want coaching, fun, accountability, if you realize that you can't do this on your own or you just plain don't want to, then I invite you to schedule that call and we can talk about if Project 90 is for you. If you would like to take some of my supplements, swanvitality.com is the website. I'll put a link in the show notes as well. I have a liver support product called Loving Liver, which I designed and specially formulated to help remove toxins from your liver after years of alcohol consumption. Again, there's a link in the show description. We've also got a green powder there, which turns into a green juice filled with uh, amazing ingredients to support you and give you energy throughout the day. And there's also a magnesium product, which I take every night to help me prepare for sleep and to sleep through the night. So there's a few options there. Lastly, if this episode or the show in general has helped you or supported you in any way, I would so appreciate it if you would write a review. It really does help the show climb the rankings and expose the show to people who don't yet know about us. So if this show has benefited you in any way and you feel compelled to pay it forward, just writing a short little review, hopefully a nice one, will be so appreciated and I will thank you immensely. Lastly, if you'd like to talk to me about anything at all, feel free to send me an email at james at alcoholfreelifestyle.com. I do read and respond to every email. And you can also follow me on Instagram at, at James Swanick. Send me a message there. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Catch you on the next one.